Hi everyone, it's Lisa. Today on Doodle Draw Art, we're going to draw an animal cell. So what I'm going to do first is use my pencil just to draw the basic circular shape of my cell. And then I'm going to make a line here where I'm cutting away from the inside. So what's going to happen is um, the cell itself, I'm going to bring a line over like this to meet the edge and a line like this to come in. And then from here, I'll go up and around like this. So now what I've created here is like I've removed this top part of the cell and then this part out here is going to be still three-dimensional and you'll see the edges of the cell. So this part will go away. I'm just going to erase this. We won't be seeing it when we're done and this line, this imaginary line, did not cut this part of the cell. So now we've got the inside of the cell visible. So I'm just going to switch to color now because we're going to do this all with marker. This part of the cell here, this outer edge that encloses the whole thing, this is the cell membrane. And it, of course, uh, as you likely know, because you've studied about cells in school, which is why you probably have to do this diagram today, you're probably doing it for a school project. The cell membrane is what keeps the cell separate from the world. It's like, it's like the enclosure, the little bubble that keeps it all separate. And then the next thing that we're going to draw inside the cell, we're going to draw the nucleus. So the nucleus is like the yolk of an egg. Well, it looks like the yolk of an egg because it's inside the middle of the, um, of the cell. And again, I'm going to make this one look like it's been cut open as well because it actually would be a three-dimensional um, orb inside the cell as well. And it's going to have um, parts inside of it that control the cell. So it would have the DNA of the cell and the chromosomes that were formed from that. And all of those things are made from a substance that's called chromatin or chromatin. I'm not sure which way you emphasize those words because I think my teachers used to call it chromatin. But then I've heard other people say chromatin, so I'm not sure. But inside the nucleus, then, there will be lots of chromatin or chromatin. You tell me. Chromatin or chromatin. And so then also it would become perhaps more densely, um, more densely uh, concentrated in the uh, center of the nucleus here, in the nucleolus, a dark spot that's visible within the nucleus. Uh, and also there's little pores in the nucleus that allow materials to go in and out. So if you wanted to add those, you just need to grab a slightly darker color and make some dots on your nucleus on the outside here to show the pores that are going through there. So I suppose we should label our cell as we go. So let's start off with uh, that's my bigger Sharpie marker. So we're going to first of all lab label this part here. This will be the cell membrane. And then we have the nucleus. And I don't know if you wanted to label the chromatin or the nucleolus. Yeah, the nucleolus, but you can if you like. All right, so now something else that's here in the uh, in the cell is this endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, I always liked saying that word when I was in school, endoplasmic reticulum, the ER. Uh, there's two types of ER, and it kind of looks like ribbons. So there's going to be smooth endoplasmic reticulum and also rough endoplasmic reticulum. So I'm just going to draw a little bit of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and it's just going to be, it's going to just be lining along like this like so. Uh, we're going to call that the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and we could put more than one of those if we wanted. Like so. And so the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a transport mechanism in the cell and I will just draw a label over here. So when you're labeling something it's a good idea to try and keep your lines direct going from your words to the thing that you're labeling, and also print clearly. Endoplasmic reticulum. Great. 
Then there's another kind of Esma endoplasmic reticulum called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And that one has um, little ribosomes all over the outside. So we're going to draw that one here. Let's just draw this big rough endoplasmic reticulum here. And we're going to make some ribosomes on it. So those are just hanging out on the surface of this rough endoplasmic reticulum. All right. And we'll put a label on this as well. So within the cell, we could have multiple. The only thing that's only got one is the, is the nucleus. So you can draw more than one of these if you want to. So now I'm going to label this. Uh, I'm going to draw a line like here. And I'm going to label rough endoplasmic reticulum. And then ribosomes. Oh, come out a little further. Now, if I just say ribosome, I can point at one. But if I want to say more than one, I'll say ribosomes. And then I can point this out to more than one. And we'll actually be able to tell more easily specifically what it is that we're pointing at. Because if we don't sort of show that there's multiples of these, it might become uh, confusing as to what we're pointing at in that little section. All right. So then we also have something called a lysosome. Lysosome. The lysosomes in the cell are the things that help to eat the things that are not the cell. It's like it's like the stomach of the cell it helps to digest the parts that are um, extra things that have come along. So the lysosome is just like a little, uh, hard to even describe, kind of little capsule shaped thing. So if we looked inside of that, it would also be like an, a little open section there. So we would see like the inside of this. And there's just a few of those floating around inside the cell so that it uh, can help to clean up all of the extra bits in the cell. So we'll go ahead and label that as lysosome. Let me spell it right. L-Y-S-O-S-O-M-E. So there we have the lysosome. And we also have something called um, mitochondria in the cell. And the mitochondria is like the energy of the cell. It's like the, the furnace or the powerhouse. Let me just grab another color here. How about purple? So mitochondria um, usually have this look of uh, an, a little membrane like this with some squiggles on the inside. So here we have mitochondria. I'll make another one over here. So they're always kind of P-shaped or pod-shaped. And then they have all of these surface area membranes on the inside. And so we'll make a little line here. Let's see, where should we put more words? I guess this is, I didn't leave enough room here. So it's got to go on this side. And I'll put mitochondria. Almost ran out of room. Oh my gosh, that was close. Mitochondria. All right. Golgi bodies. Now, the Golgi bodies, they are membrane type things. And I'm not even sure if we know what they do. Um, you could maybe tell me what the Golgi body does. I don't know. But it always kind of looks like this in diagrams with sort of bulging ends. And there's like a whole, it's a Golgi complex sometimes, Golgi bodies. But yeah, it's just this sort of blobular <laughs> things on the outside. I seem to remember that they do something about the uh, packaging or uh, you could tell me. It's been a long time since I've had to study ge uh, biology. So Golgi and let's be, let's be, um, should we call it Golgi bodies or should we call it Golgi complex? Let's call it Golgi bodies. Why not? So there we go, it's faster to write it. The Golgi bodies are there, nice. And uh, then we have these little compartments in the cell called vacuoles. And vacuoles are used to send things out of the cell 
um, or contain things within the cell that are essentially not part of the cell. So the vacuoles are just like to evacuate things, let's say, from the cell. So here we have a vacuole. And then the last thing that we would have in the cell is the centrioles. So we have these centrioles and they are like little tubules. And if there's more than one, they'll just lay in angles to each other. So I always think these look like um, licorice candy, the black ones that have like a whole bunch of little tubes all laying together. So these are just centrioles. I'll draw one over here. Awesome. All right. And then we have the cytoplasm, which is all of the goo inside the cell. So I think I'll use a color pencil to color this part in just so it doesn't get too heavy. All right. So those are all of the parts of a cell. I'm just going to see which one of these pinks is darker. Mm, they're different. That's all that matters. So these are all the parts of a cell. I hope you enjoyed watching me demonstrate this diagram today. Good luck on your science project or your class assignment for drawing the parts of a cell. I'm being careful not to color inside the vacuoles because the vacuoles um, do not contain cytoplasm. They contain other things that need to be sent out of the cell. So I'm just coloring one color pink down on this side and not pressing very darkly. And then I'm just using this slightly darker pink. This will give it an even more three-dimensional appearance because when I get to this middle, there'll be a bit of a line of sh like a shadow, a shadowy edge coming from one side or the other here. All right, so if you have some other suggestions for things that you would like, maybe you'd like me to do a plant cell or you've got some other school project work that you would like me to help you draw, you could leave those notes in the comments. And I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. If you found this video helpful, please click like. And uh, you could check out the sidebar here for more things to draw here on Doodle Draw Art. So thanks for watching.